Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Loki, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today, we're going to be going over the two new Valentine's Day units that are coming with the Gal Dragalia Remix. And going over them, basically just trying to go over Valentine Chelsea, trying to figure out exactly what the hell she does. Uh, that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. You can comment and tell me how you feel about any of the things discussed in here. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a good chance I'm going to get some stuff wrong. Uh, because I'm trying to still figure out exactly what's going on with Valentine's Chelsea, and I'm literally, like, my thoughts on her are kind of forever changing the more I kind of re It's like a- it's very interesting how much they put into her. It's kind of crazy. Um, and you subscribe to me if you want some more. We're getting closer and closer to that 2000. I hope to make it pretty soon. Or as close as we can get it. So let's get into it. First things first, I should mention, of course, Valentine's Chelsea is limited. The Valentine's units you always are. But the Valentine's Dragons are not, so uh, the Wind Dragon that comes with her is not limited. And of course, Galaranzel is very good. We probably won't be going over him because this entire video is going to be taken over by Chelsea. <sighs> but he's very good. If uh, He was very similar to Galamim in the past, in which that he was one of the, the not-as-good 5-star Gala units, and then both him and Mim got buffed to the point that they're both fantastic, so... If you're someone who's been going for him, this is your chance to get him. Hopefully you get him after, if you have anything after Persona 5. So, I know I don't. So let's go into it. Also, the returning is Melody and uh, Adis, as I believe you say his name. I'm not 100% sure. Alright, Valentine's Chelsea. I'm skipping the adventure details. I'm going straight to the skills because it's a lot. Skill 1, Rampaging Passion. Deals damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts Stormlash. Additionally, grants the user the Obstruction Deleter effect, but inflicts them with burn. Um, skill energy required for this is 2,910, uh, and when it is a shareable skill, it is 12,658. Its special effects, obst uh, Obstruction Deleter is strength plus 10%, it lasts for 15 seconds. Burn lasts 15 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds, and damages 5% of max HP. Stormlash lasts 21 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds, and damages 41. Okay. Infinite Love grants the Romance Gauge one full charge and activates Skill Shift. This Skill Shift will cycle through a total of three phases. When the Romance Gauge has five charges, this skill will instead grant all teammates the Sweet Valentine effect, grant the user the Bittersweet Valentine effect, Immediately ready the Rampaging Passion skill for use, and no longer activates skill shift. So basically what it's saying is that once you get your romance gauge to the full up top, you'll stop going through a skill shift of phase uh, 2 and 3 here, and you'll just always be doing this effect right here. Um, and of course it readies up this move right here. So... Phase 2, skill energy required. This move, by the way, takes 11,640 um, skill energy, so it's a lot. Um, Sweet Valentine, defense plus 15%, last 15 seconds, targets entire team. That's the special effect of that. Phase 2, Sweet Valentine, defense 15%, last 15 seconds. Bittersweet Valentine, skill damage up 30%, charges 1, target only the user. And then, of course, during the ability effect where you have a full 5, it is Sweet Valentine, defense plus 15%, last 15 seconds. And Bittersweet Valentine, skill damage up 30%, charges 1. Um, it still requires 11,640 to activate. So that's consistent for everything. This is a lot. I think this is actually the most a, a move is used that is not um, a shareable skill. Obviously, shareable skills are up there. Uh, I checked, I think I ended up checking on Krom, because I was trying to think of units that have really, really, really long um, skill twos, and I think uh, Krom is the most recent unit that came to mind, and Krom's it was like, I think, 3,000 something. So obviously there are probably units with longer um, skill energy required, but it's a lot. But we'll get into it, because it, en it ends up being a lot, but some of it might not matter. So co-op ability is skill haste 15%, increases the skill gauge fill rate by 15%, benefits the whole team. Win Vengeful Shield 5. If the user is attuned to win, grants them a 1-use one, one shield that nullifies damage up to 25% of their maximum HP. When they are hit by an attack that inflicts an infliction. After activating this ability, when all activate again for 20 seconds, 
This shield does not stack with any other shield of the same type and fits the whole team. So your chain co-op ability, as far as I can know, I think it's pretty useful, but it also kind of helps um, with her skill one if you're worried about like, oh my god, I'm going to die to the burn. Well, I think with this, once you activate this, you get your burn, but you also get your shield, so it kind of evens out a little bit. Especially considering it deals, <laughs> her burn is 5% of the max HP, and it lasts for 15 seconds and activates 2.9 seconds, so... It, she'll be lose a little bit of her HP with that, for sure. Anyway, let's move on. Oh god, this ability. Okay. Mad Romantic 2 grants the user a romance gauge that can hold up to 5 charges and offers the following effects. Powers up the user's one powers up the user standard attacks in the infinite love skill when the romance gauge has five charges. Two, grants the romance gauge one full charge when the infinite love skill is used. Three, fills the romance gauge by 12.5% when the user is buffed with a skill after activating this effect will not activate again for five seconds. Four, grants the following effects based on the number of charges the romance gauge has. Okay. If she has no Romance Gauge Charge, reduces skill damage, defense, and maximum HP by 10%. If she has 1, reduces skill damage, defense, and maximum HP by 5%, and reduces susceptibility to afflictions by 20%. 2, reduces susceptibility by afflictions by 40%, does not affect skill damage, defense, or HP. When she has 3, increases skill damage, defense, and maximum HP by 5%, and reduces susceptibility to afflictions by 60%. 4. Increases skill damage, defense, and maximum HP by 10% and reduces susceptibility to afflictions by 80%. 5. Increases skill damage by 25%, increases defense and maximum HP by 15%, and reduces susceptibility to afflictions by 100%. So, <laughs> we'll get back to this. Blistering Affection 2. When the user is hit by an attack that inflicts burn, the skill gauge for infinite love is filled by 25%, and the Heart of Blaze effect is activated for 8 seconds. During Heart of Blaze, the user's attack rate is increased by 15%, and their next 3-4 strikes are granted the ability to spell one enemy buff, Heart of Blaze will not stack. After activating this ability, it will not activate again for 5 seconds, and she has Stormland Punisher 30%. Okay. So, first things first. This is a... This is a very interesting unit. She seems to be very much designed so to, as if to maybe not, like, break the game in some ways. Like, it, it, it's weird because it feels like, obviously, once you get the romance gauge to the final full effect, um, it's pretty nuts, right? Giving yourself 25% skill damage, defense, and maximum HP. No, giving yourself... 25% skill damage is nuts, and then increasing defense and maximum HP by 15%, and you just can't hit any afflictions, it's pretty crazy. Here's the negatives. Starting out, she doesn't have any... She has none. She has no... So she can basically be hit by every single affliction. Most units, I think, um, have the ability to stop at least one affliction. One or two, I think. Um, she's interesting because she basically starts off super duper weak but as the battle goes on and goes longer she becomes way way more strong there's like no denying that like once she hits five it's kind of game over at that point i would say she's going to be just dealing so much damage these awful they've also smartly like realized like okay so this move specifically is when she gets hit by an attack that inflicts burn doesn't say you have to actually be burned so for example um once she because you would think like oh this skill is basically dead once she gets charge 5. No, I don't think that's the way it's like. The way it's worded, it makes it seem like she would be able to continuously keep getting her 25% um, to skill stuff as long... Yeah. Yeah, it would. It, it seems designed in a way that she should still be able to get um, her infinite love filled by 25%. So... And this move right here, infinite love, you basically want to use this move as much as possible but they realized that if you actually got it to level 5 too quickly, things would be kind of like messed up. So this is a unit where I'm just looking at and I'm like, I need to see it in action. Because like, even though I have all these numbers that I'm going into my head, I'm like, well, start, well, start of the phase, she might be kind of super weak. Having no affliction stuff, maybe it's not for some bosses. 
specifically because she is a wind. <laughs> like, there's not a lot of bosses. Wind fights a lot of water units. There's not a lot of, like, water bosses that hit you with burning, so she's actually going to be 100% giving herself all the burn, I think. At least, you can correct me if there's some water bosses that inflict burning, cause, but up to my mind, I don't think there's any. Maybe eventually we'll get one where they just give you such hot water you end up burned, like scalding or something. Um, I don't know, I think her design is extremely interesting. I don't know if that translates to an extremely good unit, but I will say if that if it turns out that you can actually get infinite love to charge 5 super fast and super crazy fast, then I would say she has the potential to be just like an insane damage dealer. It's just the specific hurt of her potential at the start. Like they did that on purpose because if they she didn't have that, then she would be kind of nuts, I would say. She'd be kind of near unstoppable, like, monster if she didn't have some way of stopping her. Because she just does so much, it looks like to me. I don't know. That's how I'm kind of feeling about her right now. That's kind of where I'm kind of in the camp of I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to let the Chelsea fans out there, you know. You know who you are. <laughs> you, 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 the, I, I'm aware that you exist. Apologies for my nugget field uh, saying who cares about Valentine's Chelsea when I was summoning for Panther. I was in a dark place forgive me um but yeah that's kind of how i feel about her and it's a lot to kind of go through but once you kind of read her and you kind of go oh yeah so oh okay so there's negative drawbacks but then there's also extremely she's basically what i say and what i'm trying to say here high risk high reward is kind of what i'm seeing right now at the moment obviously once the unit comes out and people actually get the player we'll actually know how what kind of unit she actually is but that in my mind is currently what she is okay so fun this is the most intense I think a Valentine's unit has been in a very long time. This is the most intense a unit has been in a long time, actually. I think the last one was um, Gala Alex. Yeah, I think Gala Alex was the last unit I looked at and went, what? How does this work? So, uh, very good company. Let's. I hope that she's insanely good. That's one of my I'm not going to be summoning for her, but I hope for the specific people who want her, she's insanely good. All right, let's move on to the dragon. Uh, his name is Menopa no Menoti Menotis Menotis. For a second there, I wanted to call him Menotits, but that is not his name. Meniodius Odeon. So we got Odeon here. Um, he's the last of the brother of the Greeks, Prometheus, and the emo boy that I can't remember the name at the moment. Um, his skill is deals damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts Stormlash. Cool. Stormlash lasts 21 seconds. Same as everything else, it's Stormlash. Um, his abilities are Wind Strength and Water Resistance 5. If the user is attuned to Wind, increases Strength by 50% and adds 15% to Water Resistance. Wind, wind Vengeful Strength and Counter 2. If the user is attuned to Wind, deals Wind damage to surrounding enemies and grants the user Deranged Thrill Effect. For 45 seconds when they are hit by an attack that inflicts an affliction. During the ranged thrill, user strength is increased by 25%. The ranged thrill will not stack and after activating this ability will not activate again for 20 seconds. This sounds super fun. <laughs> like, I'm not super into his design here where he kind of looks like a... Like somehow he looks like even... He looks like a different, like, not the emo boy that I'm, this isn't my version of an emo boy that I had growing up in high school. It's like a new, the new generation's version is, I guess, the best way. Also, he kind of looks like a Kingdom Hearts character now that I look at him. Yeah, that's what he is. He's a Kingdom Hearts character. Anyway, I like the idea of this counter stuff. It's very interesting to give it to Win for the first time. I kind of want to see how... It's funny after saying, like, oh yeah, here's all these damage numbers that all these other moves do. They're not telling us how much the wind counter is doing. So I'm wondering if it's based off the total strength of the actual unit. Like, if it goes like that. Or maybe it's like a tiny, like, you know, get back, and it deals like a little bit of damage. I don't know. I think it's super interesting. I like that they're experimenting with different types of um units also the wording specifically isn't that you have to be afflicted with something it just you have to be hit by a move that would cause an affliction um which makes it much better than if if it was literally hey get afflicted by something because otherwise it wouldn't be as good and that's kind of the two new valentine like i said this guy's good 
that's the two new Valentine's Day units. Those are my thoughts on them currently. Um, leave your thoughts, of course, below. Tell me if you're summoning or not. If you are summoning, I wish you the best of luck. Uh... <laughs> I haven't had the greatest luck, so maybe that's not the <laughs> year. I'm the last guy you need to be asking about uh, for luck in Dragalia at the moment. But either way, the best of luck to all of you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Have a good day. And that's the end of the day's adventure. There you go.